Hello, and welcome back to another episode where I slowly realized that my hobby is taking my wallet hostage and left a vague ransom note. But the truth is, I wouldn't have it any other way. I mean, come on, what else am I going to spend my money on? Food? <laughs> I am kind of hungry, though. Well, here I am, sitting in a chair, thinking back on my life and the cameras that have graced my camera shelf. Cameras have always been there for me. First, it was my Sony Handycam. Sure, it's a camcorder, but it started me down this path nearly 50 years ago. I am the man I am today because of that high 8 plastic. One thing that you should know about me is I get attached to objects way too easy. For some reason, I put emotion and personalities into them like they're living beings with a soul. Why? Probably because I have this deep-seated scars from childhood friends giving me wedgies and flushing my head in the toilet. See, cameras would never do that. Well, maybe except the Pentax 645N. She'd rather die than be seen in my hands. What? But I've actually only ever sold one camera, the Fuji GW690. It was a great camera, but I just didn't pick it up as much as I wanted to, so I had to find a new home for it. Now, you might think I just buy cameras willy-nilly, kind of like Han Solo and how he escaped Corellia, not planned. And if you haven't seen that movie yet, well, you probably should. I don't know what you're doing with your life. Trust me, these references are gonna go a lot smoother. But no, I actually have a purpose for all the cameras in my ever-expanding collection. <laughs> okay, let's get this party started. First up, the smallest camera I own, the Ricoh R1S. This camera is straight fire. Since the beginning of this channel, I have always been looking for a point and shoot that could take the cake and bake the cake. I don't know what that means. I had a Canon Sure Shot and it was dope, but I gave that to my brother. And I also had Olympus Epic Zoom that kind of sounded like a dying cat. I gave that one to Lauren, but it wasn't until the Rico came into my life that I truly knew what a point and shoot could be. Sexy, slim, and also fast. All the good qualities in a partner. Even though the lens isn't the fastest at 3.5, it's 30 millimeter field of view and the macro functions make it a great put in your butt pocket camera. It's literally one of the smallest point and shoot cameras you'll ever find. It's basically just the size of a 35 millimeter canister. Here are some of my favorite photos taken with this camera. Now, moving along to my very first reliable 35 millimeter camera, the Minolta X700. When I first purchased this lovely lady, I didn't do much research. I'm not gonna lie to you. At the time, Canon AE-1s were climbing in price. So to be contrary, I decided to look into this camera. And so one blog read later, I decided to pick up the X700 for the price of 70 sunglasses from the dollar store. Sounds like a good price to me. For an SLR, this camera is light and portable with pretty decent lenses. And Minolta made an array of them. Along with program and aperture priority modes, this camera is great for beginners just getting into film. I've taken this Minolta on so many trips. Thailand, Morocco, downtown Los Angeles. Even though I haven't picked her up in a while, she's got a special place in my heart. Okay, now sometimes you wanna go fast. And that's where the EOS One comes in. I got this camera for two reasons. The shutter speed is one over eight thousandths of a second. It takes modern EF lenses. And at the time, it was cheap. It only took 125 pairs of sunglasses from the dollar store. Wait, yeah, that's three. Now this wouldn't be the first camera I choose for a light kayak trip down the lovely LA river. Due to its size, this camera is pretty beastly, mostly because of the battery grip. But when you slap on modern lenses on this bad boy, you can't deny the image quality from this camera. This is definitely one of those cameras you can set it and forget it. It's perfect for all those sporting events, protests, and exotic animal portraits. Honestly, it's one of those cameras I should pick up more often, but I do have to say, it knows it's well loved. Just like Kira in Solo, a Star Wars story. Okay, this camera needs no introduction. She is my one and only, the light at the end of the dark tunnel, the love of my life, the Leica M6. When I die and my friends and family give me a Viking funeral, this lovely red dot is coming over that waterfall with me. Sorry, I'm not letting this go to one of those auctions where these grubby kids can get their hands on my baby. She is my precious. But 
really? What is there more to say about the Leica M6? I've already made a video diary about how much I love her. Well, I've also made a bunch of videos about the other cameras too, so you might as well go check those out. The Leica just feels right with every frame. And not to mention, I'm a huge fan of rangefinders. Even though I haven't had it as long as some of the other cameras, this is my go-to 35 millimeter camera. I'm almost always picking this up for one of my trips. If I had to let go of all my other cameras and just keep one, this would be it. But let's not talk about dark subject matter. We like to keep a light on this channel. Okay, let's move to some medium format, the Holga and Yashica. These two I put together because they were my first film cameras. The Holga was the first one to start me down this journey and the Yashica came in hot and fast at number two, cementing my addiction to film. The Holga gave me some sweet, awesome, fun, color flashed photos. And the Yashica proved to be the best travel partner when making my travels to Japan. Those photos are still some of my favorites I've taken. I did also have a digital camera there in Japan with me, but I honestly haven't looked at those photos since. The film photos live on. Oh baby, this tank. By now, everyone and their mom knows about the Pentax 6.7. And why your mom? Well, because she had to pick you up from the hospital after you tried to lift it. It's happened to the best of us. But this giant hulk of a camera is right up there with a Leica M6 in my heart. For the longest time, this baby came everywhere with me. I got this camera and four lenses for the price of 900 sunglasses from the dollar store. Yeah, that was back in the day when no one knew what medium format film was and still called it 120 millimeter. We've all done it. There's no shame. Believe it or not, I hiked with this beast. And it was the camera that I took to Vancouver. <laughs> that should blow your mind. Obviously, this camera is nothing without its superb lenses. Put any one of those slabs of glass on this camera and you'll be glad that you did. And because it's medium format SLR, it's great for portraits, which I, I don't really take. So I don't know why I brought it up but I really do think I've taken some of my best photos with this camera. Also, if you need to fight off a ward of angry squirrels, this would be my weapon of choice. Just saying. Now, if I were to pick my favorite camera brand of all time, it would probably have to be Mamiya. Yeah, I know, maybe it's a weird choice, but I'm also right about Solo being the best Star Wars movie since the original trilogy, so maybe I'm on to something. Mamiya has constantly impressed me with all their medium format cameras. Ever since my buddy indefinitely lent me his RZ67 and Daddy Grain let me touch his Mamiya 7, I've always been on a mission to collect them all. I'm still looking out for that Charizard though. Even though the Mamiya RZ67 is as heavy as a Wookiee, these lenses are superb. Which brings me to the Mamiya 645 Pro, the little brother to the RZ. When looking at the 645 format, I knew I wanted a camera that was all modular. And I didn't have to go far, but to look at the Mamiya 645 Pro. I picked up this camera at a sure economics. Being able to shoot 15 frames on medium format is nice to have. And it makes doing film comparisons a breeze with the interchangeable backs. I'm a huge fan of the 645 format. The Mamiya 645 Pro lenses are phenomenal and render the image with incredible depth. I only have the 45 for now, but I'll be adding more to my collection. I haven't had this camera long, but I'm definitely into the images I've been getting from this square boxy body. Unfortunately, I only have the black version of the 645 Pro. I mean, come on, look at these other colors they made. Oh my God, I wish I had them. <sighs> okay. Remember when I said that the Leica M6 was my one and only like 30 seconds ago? I lied to you. I didn't tell you the entire truth. What I really meant was to say that the Leica M6 and the Mamiya 7 is my one and only. Let's not do the math on that. See, the Mamiya 7 is basically a giant version of the M6. It's a rangefinder, it's light, it's portable, and it has a banging bod. When the camera has all its features and personal traits that you're looking for and the love of your life, it has to be forever. See, the Mamiya 7 is the perfect travel companion for all your 6.7 needs. This was my go-to medium format camera for Route 66 trip with Jason and quite a few other trips as well. And I just got a panel kit for my Mamiya 7. This camera is unstoppable.
the sure fact that you can shoot a big ass negative on sharp ass glass, it has to sit beside you in Valhalla. If I had to let go of all my other cameras and keep just one, this one would be it. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? It's time to go big or go home. And by big, I mean big negatives. And by big negatives, I mean money drained from your account faster than Han can do the Kessel Run. This is, this is my bag it goes into. I'm not gonna take it out right now. It's, I don't wanna do that. The Intrepid 4x5 Black Edition fills a giant 4x5 large format hole in my heart. When I wanna be a masochist and lug a bunch of gear around only for one shot, the Intrepid is the one that I take. The great thing is this camera is as light as 3D printed parts, and that's because it is. It's 3D printed. Coming in at the same weight as a bunch of bananas, the Intrepid camera system is so light and portable and relatively easy to set up. Let's be real, large format is a pain, but also rewarding. I love all the little details you can add to your image and the options that you have with the swing and the tilt. By no means do I think I've mastered it. I mean, nearly every single time I have to pray to the film gods to make sure I get an image. When I move to large format, I feel like I leveled up. Now all my images can't be amazing, but I do like a lot of my large format images. Now it's time for some honorable mentions. I don't always use these cameras, be that they're weird formats or just doesn't suit me. Or they just don't fit in my backpack when I'm about to leave for a road trip. But they do have a special place in my heart. If you haven't figured out, all my cameras have special places in my heart. I got a lot of places in my heart and they're all special for my cameras, so. First, I have like five Polaroid cameras, some new, some old, some mine, some not. I take them out when I feel like I'm having an instant time with family or friends, but otherwise they make for good decorations. I also have a Star Wars camera because obviously, and I haven't done a review on it yet because I really want to recreate a scene from Star Wars and that's just not in my budget. So just gotta wait. And last but not least, the only digital camera in my entire collection, the Sony Cybershot. I know you gotta love this one. I mean, that's how I came up with the name for this channel. It's so bad, it's good. Okay, so now that you are officially peanut butter and jelly of my entire collection, I'm gonna have to say something. I'm not getting any more cameras. <laughs> nah, I mean, come on, come on. I got you. But honestly, I think I'm gonna focus on getting lenses for my camera systems. A good body is great, but having banging lenses is where it's at. Lenses is the thing that enhances the life and the character and the image quality of all your photos. So if you take anything away from this video, it's that Solo was the best Star Wars film since the original trilogy. Oh, and cameras don't make you a better photographer. Practice does. So you should go shoot. Oh yeah, and I bought this.